Well, hello and welcome to another terrible tabletop tutorial from the Corona Quarantine Kitchen. As always, I am MD Welch and I'm delighted to be your host for another episode. And today we are talking about customization, not of your barbecue items. I had to put something on the tabletop here to photograph the difference between yellow mustard and gray poupon. And I'm, by the way, totally prepared for the onslaught of comments on which is better. Um, and if that's where the discussion goes on this video, okay. Uh, but really what I'm here to do is talk about how to customize your camera or the concepts behind it. Now I know this is not the most attractive thing out there. Yeah, you would like me to be talking about how to make amazing portraits or retouching things, but I find that the ability to customize a camera, to make a camera your own, not only brings a better relationship, almost an intimate connection between you and your camera, but also allows you to work better as a particular photographer. Now, this is not gonna focus on any particular system, even though that I'm using Sony. So for my Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Fuji, and Pentax fans, don't worry, this is going to be kind of a generic video. So there's a lot of different ways to customize your camera. First and foremost are the physical buttons on your camera. And depending on make and model, you may have more customizable buttons and or the ability to customize the existing buttons opposed to maybe another camera maker model. So in this particular camera's case, I have a C1, a C2, a C3, and a C4, which is right next to the garbage can icon, which could very well be one of the worst design decisions I've ever seen on a camera body. I don't like it when anything's close to the uh, garbage can icon, but that's for another day in discussion. So I have the ability to customize these buttons. Now on your camera system, you might have a C1 or a C2. You might, it also might be labeled F1 or F2 for function buttons as well. So double check your manual there. One other thing to point out about the buttons is most cameras will also allow you to customize any of the other buttons. So the up, down, left, and right on the control wheel and the center button, as well as what the autofocus button and auto exposure lock button does, and of course, the shutter button and how it behaves. In fact, the autofocus button, auto exposure lock, and shutter buttons were probably the first buttons that were really customizable on most systems and are probably the first buttons that anybody customizes, especially if you're using back button focus. I do know that some camera companies uh, do not have a separate autofocus and auto exposure lock button, and you could just change those in a particular menu if you want to. Now, the whole idea behind customizing a button on your camera, and this is the first tip I wanna share, is that it's supposed to make getting to items that you're constantly using while you're shooting or video recording easier to get a hold of. It doesn't make a lot of sense to put some sort of item that you're not going to access a lot onto a customizable button. In fact, out of the box, C1 on Sony system is the metering mode. And I find, at least for personal shooting, I don't use or change the metering modes as much as I change other features. So I actually reassign this button. I put it at C4. In my case, C1 is the a zebra setting, which I've done a video on zebra control and how that's really good for getting more accurate exposure out of your camera system, especially if you're shooting mirrorless. But of course, because I'm connected to HDMI, I can't show you zebras on here. Same is true for C2. C2 is for peaking, so the ability to see if I'm in or out of focus. This is great for third-party lenses as well. So. So these two features I use more than just about anything, and I assign them to C1 and C2 simply so I could get to them while I'm shooting. I could feel these two buttons with my index fingers. I don't even have to pull the camera away, turn them on, turn them off, gives me a lot of access here. So the customization of the buttons is totally up to you, but again, you wanna think about it as items that you're gonna need quick access to while you're shooting, especially if you're shooting things in the moment and you don't have time to drill down into menu systems. Now next on the list is your function or quick menu, which is found on a lot of camera systems. Nikon labels this as a lowercase letter I for info menu, Q for Canon for quick menu. I believe other camera companies, including Sony, use the FN function for function menu here, but this is just basically a button that you're gonna hit on the back of your camera and you're gonna get access to items that you use frequently, maybe not as frequently as a customizable button, but something that you use pretty frequently. You'll find a lot of repeat here, by the way. So for example, ISO is in this menu as well as a dedicated button on the back of the camera. So you're gonna find there's some redundancy here. Now in the case of Sony, I could customize this menu. I could add items, I could remove items as much as I want, which does allow me to customize this camera even more and means that I don't have to drill down into a menu system to go find something that I'm going to access a lot. One thing I'm gonna say before I go any further, you really do need to experiment with your camera. You need to figure out what items you're gonna 
going to use the most and then, you know, kind of assign a priority to it. Because a lot of times when you're assigning these customizable functions, you also need to know where they are in your menu system. So there does need to be some experience with the camera to really dial these things in. And you certainly don't want to do this when you're brand new to a camera. You want to get a little bit more experience with it. By the way, we're all down, not doing a lot of shooting. So this is a great time to play with these features. Next up is the ability to actually customize the menu itself. So when I hit the menu button, I bring up uh, the menu here. A lot of people like to say how bad the Sony menu system is, and I'm not gonna defend it in any way, shape, or form at the moment, but I will say that Sony, Canon, Nikon, just about every camera system that I've used now has a customizable menu page here. So these are menu items that you're going to use a fair amount, but nothing that you need to have quick access to. But I come into here and one of the big ones to add to this is the ability to format your card. It's great, especially if you're working on different camera systems where maybe the menu's changed around a little bit, that I could simply come down into here and format my memory card at any time. I don't have to drill through other menu items to find this. And same goes for all of these other things. Pixel shift, which allows me to do multiple exposures and merge them together. My interval shooting, turning face registration on or off, and silent shooting. And I could have multiple pages here for this menu, so I can really customize this. Again though, you need to be comfortable with the camera. You need to know where these items are in the menu system because it could be really difficult to find these things if you don't know where they are in the rest of the menu of the camera. So uh, you need to get familiar with these pages a little bit before you can actually customize things. Now, one of the next features to customize your camera, and that's found on most cameras, at least most cameras that I've worked at, regardless of manufacturer, is on your control dial or your mode dial, you'll locate some numbers. Sometimes it'll say C1, or I'll just have regular numbers, in this case, one, two, and three. What this is, is a way to assign presets for every function of your camera when it comes to shooting, focus, exposure, uh, what type of exposure mode that you're in. It's really limitless. It doesn't, at least in Sony's case, it doesn't allow you to customize or change the buttons from one preset to another, but it pretty much does everything else. Now, the nice thing about this is it is allows a photographer to dial in a specific recipe or setting for how they're shooting. So in my case, if I go to number one here on the dial, what will happen is it will put it into aperture priority, continuous shooting, multimeter, auto ISO, continuous autofocus. It has a certain amount of autofocus points selected. It has other color features turned off, some other things turned on. But this is what I use when I am running and gunning. When I'm shooting in available light, I'm running inside, I'm running outside. I don't want to have to worry about changing a lot of different settings here. I let the camera drive a lot of these systems here. But I might then need to go to my flash system here. And rather than having to reset everything, for example, I like to shoot in manual mode at 1 1 60th of a second. I like to keep my ISO as low as possible. So rather than having to remember to turn these settings on or off, and let's face it, a lot of times just leaving one setting on can really cause you a headache or a problem on a shoot or cause you to miss a shot. You can actually assign these numbers to these specific recipes. Now, in my camera's case, I have three. Some cameras have two. I've seen Olympus cameras now have four. But all that you need to do is start off by putting your camera in a particular mode. So let's say you want to program this in manual mode. That's your first item. Get into manual mode, go into all your different functions, set things up, maybe you want to do something a little bit more fancy, in my case, maybe dynamic manual focus or manual focus. Maybe you want your ISO to be you know, lower, so you could go ahead and set that up. And this is your baseline. So get everything set up the way that you want to. Then you're going to have to go into your camera's menu system, and everybody calls these things uh, by different names. Um, so you're going to have to explore your menu a little bit. But in my case, on the Sony system, there is a menu control here, and I could actually assign this to one, two, or three. And I'll just do this for three here. And when I hit it, now whatever settings that I've just done are registered to number three. So when I turn that dial from manual mode in this case, and I go into one, two, or three, now I'm in those particular settings and I could go ahead and shoot. I don't have to worry about anything and this is really nice. This is great for photographers that are shooting different genres, different subjects, and they don't want to have to remember to kind of reset their camera between shoots or they're shooting those subjects in a single day and they don't want to have to remember all those functions or features. So I apologize for having you look at two things of mustard the entire time, but hopefully you got something out of this video. Please like this video, leave a comment, feedback, any sort of requests that you want to see for future content. I wish you all the best. Take care.